So in music theory, one of the first things you need to understand is reading the different notes in different clefs. If you are a musician, you probably understand one or maybe two clefs, but in music theory, you need to understand all of the clefs. We'll start with the basics. The treble clef is one of the more common clefs that is used, and the easy way to draw it is I like to put a line going down, and then I make a little P, and I circle back around like that. The reason why we also call this a G clef is because it circles the note G. If you notice from the actual design of the treble clef, it is circling the note G. So the G clef, the treble clef, highlights the note G. To figure out the rest of the notes from there, we use the musical alphabet. These are all of the letters that you use in the musical alphabet. So if I start on G, and as I go up, I just go right back to the beginning of the alphabet, which means that this note is G, going up is A, B, C, D, E, and F, and then going down, I just go backward in the alphabet. So going below is F, E, D, and so on. So as long as you can remember that the treble clef highlights the note G, because it's circling that, you can figure out the rest of the notes from there. Let's look at another clef. The bass clef is used for lower sounding instruments, and it is also known as the F clef. And the way you know this is because in the staff it actually highlights the note F. That is how you draw a bass clef. So this means that the note that sits right here, both on this dot as well as highlighting by the other two dots, is the note F. And again, we can use our musical alphabet to figure out the rest of them. If I'm going up in the staff, I continue to move through the alphabet. So this next note up here is a G. Uh, and then I just keep going up to an A and a B. If I wanted to go downward, I know that this note was F. So going down is E. Then I have D, C, B, A, G, and so on. So you want to try and find the note F in the F clef or the bass clef and use that as your reference point to find all of the other notes. Let's look at some other not as common clefs. So the alto and tenor clef are not as commonly used uh, unless you're a viola player who reads an alto clef. Uh, tenor clef is commonly read by cellists and sometimes trombones and even bass players. Uh, the whole purpose of alto and tenor clef are really to avoid ledger lines for those instruments that sort of sit in between the treble and the bass clef. These are also called C clefs, and the reason why is because they're actually designating where middle C is by creating this little arrow that you can see here. So for the alto clef, this is middle C. For the tenor clef, this is middle C. It's actually sounding the same note, but it's putting it in different spots on the staff. So again, you can go from your alphabet and you can figure out the remainder of the notes. If I go up the staff, then I'm going up through the alphabet. So there's C, D, E, F, G, and A above the staff. If I go back down, here is B, uh, there is A, and G, and F. So it helps you to figure out uh, you use find the one note and then you can find the rest of them from there. The same thing with the tenor clef. As I go higher, I go up the alphabet. So there's D, E, F. Uh, as I go down, B, A, G, F, and E, and so on. So as long as you can remember what each clef is signifying, you can find the rest of the notes within the staff. It takes a little bit of time on clefs that you're not comfortable with, but the more practice you get, the better you get at them. It is incredibly important to be comfortable with the treble clef and the bass clef, because those are the more common clefs that you'll use. We'll do a few practices to help you with identifying the notes within the staff. Good luck!